boy oh boy viewers talk about just prioritizing other projects and just kind of putting this in the back burner a one a two tingling 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 it's the bad humor man Well, hello again, guys. It's Greg Olo Productions here, and we, here we are in year three or whatever the heck we're at now of the Columbia Graffinola service. Yes, we're back on. I don't know why this is taking so long. Uh, in the last episode, which was almost a year ago, or was a year ago now, we ended up having our phonograph motor chassis in simple green in my ultrasonic cleaner over here, which uh, rusted out the motor. But, or at least the chassis of it got kind of rusted. It was a surface level type rust. Yeah, a total blunder move there. So what we've done is, instead of, because I know I was talking about alcohol, using isopropyl alcohol and stuff to clean these motors in, uh, instead of simple green, we're not doing that because isopropyl alcohol doesn't come in big four liter jugs like Spray 9 does. And I've tested Spray 9. I've used Spray 9 to clean this motor up get all the surface rust off or whatever kind of rust that was or whatever it is that's all gone now so that's terrific i thought i ruined the motor chassis there for a second but i haven't so that's terrific we got all that rust off so okay let's continue with the ongoing cleaning process that seems to take forever and since the weather outside is never optimal to do this stuff or i just can't be bothered to go in the garage it is early april now and the snow is dissipating it's going to warm up here right away but, you know, as, I, as much as I enjoy fun and games outside like I did back in 2019, I think I'd rather just use the ultrasonic, fill it up with Spray 9, put these springs in there, and just clean them that way. I think that'd be way faster to do this. So without further not knowing what to do, because Simple Green is basically the savior of the Graffinola, or at least the work area here because it's really convenient to use, we can now get into these springs, and I don't know. If, uh, I don't know if there's anything else that needs cleaning here. I think this. No, we clean this guy. Oh, the nice the dead bug in there now. This is how long some of this stuff has been sitting here, and I'm not a procrastinator. I don't know why this happened. Uh, probably could use another cleaning spring barrel. Might need a cleaning. These guys I was planning on leaving alone, hmm, because the felt pads on there might have to replace those. I don't know where I get new ones. Uh, what's all this? Just more screws. And there's the grommet, or not the grommets. These are the governor weights. They're made of felt. I don't know why they didn't use metal ones like Victor, but anyway, over Columbia, we gotta be different. Screws, more dead bugs. Why the heck are... Okay, I'm not even gonna ask why. Let's just, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, you wanna talk about comical? Yeah, it's this, this has all been sitting here for so long. It's, it, you know, bugs are crawling into these things and dying. Anyway, you know what? Let's let's save more lives for any pale bugs that decide to come in here. Let's uh, let's get these springs clean ASAP. So cleaning these things in an ultrasonic cleaner is actually, as you can see, incredibly convenient. We might be able to fit both springs in there. Let's try it. The work I have to do, the better. Terrific. Let's put even more stuff in here. I believe this is the barrel divider here, or whatever that's called. I still don't know how these spring barrels work. How they um, are able to transfer the power from one spring to another. Uh, or whatever. I don't know. Someone told me they work together. That's probably the correct answer to that. How these... I don't know. Anyway, the point is, I've got a, a little ways to learn how phonographs work. I, I mean, you know, I can take it apart, but and I can put it back together, but I may not know entirely how it all works. It's just kind of putting things back where I found them, if you know what I mean. And just like that, Greg poured the gasoline onto the phonograph springs. Okay, before we get all trigger happy and the push the button and let the ultrasonic go department, you can see that the ultrasonic has this kind of line here. Yeah, that's a fill line. And I've just emptied a four liter jug of spray nine into this tank. And we're still not quite hitting the fill line. So I've got another one here. We're going to just add a little more i just want to note that just you know just in case you're doing this yourself you got to go above the fill line not by much but just at the fill line or above it also when these phonograph springs and all this stuff comes out of here it's going to be soaking wet 
needs to dry somewhere. And I was debating putting a bunch of old newspapers on there, well, not old newspapers like Troy History Collects, but uh, old news, uh, old, week old newspaper that no one's going to read. Uh, I was debating doing that, but there's a lot of text on those things, and half the time they say what city I'm in. So we passed on that. We just grabbed a couple of old t-shirts. They're going to sit on there. I'm not sure if I'm going to do any scrubbing with brushes on these things. Uh, we'll see how the Spray 9 performs and see how clean these are when they come out. I know these top coils are kind of sticking out of here still. Uh, it's not the end of the world if I have to wipe those off instead of having them submerged. Okay, so now that the springs have gone through the cleaner, I've utilized my clock cleaning bin here. I've emptied out all the clock cleaning stuff to make room for these massive mainsprings or... Well, main, that doesn't that doesn't sound like the right term for a phonograph. Uh, the main the the springs that yeah the springs they're going in here and we're hopefully gonna scrub them down I think or at least inspect them anyway. Okay, out with spring number one. Let's get this guy out of here. I'm just gonna move that over there. Get this out of here. Okay, there's this. Well, he looks okay. Let's see, are you all messed up? Let's... Paper towel. Brought to you in part by C. Porter 1947, who decides to clean his phonograph springs with paper towel, ladies and gentlemen. And there's still dirt coming off this. Okay. Um, or some dirt, anyway. Let's see, we got more. Let's try and get the center of the coil there, see what's going on. I don't know if there's much going on. Actually, this is fairly clean. I think this might be usable as is. Let's grab more paper. Let's, gra let's grab more paper towel. Brought to you in part by... Okay, I'm going to stop. Let's get more paper towel going there. Kind of see what we're... And yeah, I am wearing gloves here. This is not something I want to do barehanded. Uh, yeah, it looks fairly okay. I don't know why, you yeah, know, that might be, I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to put that on the quote-unquote drying shirts or whatever. Okay, spring number two. Plus barrel, which has been riveted to the barrel for some reason. Oh, this is a thousand times cleaner in here. That's great. Okay. Um, no, viewers, of course this isn't a commercial for ultrasonic cleaning. What are you talking about? Do you think I'd sell out on you like that? Okay, the barrel's still a little dirty. Mm, yeah, it's looking better though. This is all way better than what would have been done with brushes, etc. I think this is basically good. Yeah, that's more or less it all there. And that's all I had in the cleaner. Um, I mean, you can't see it right now, viewers, but the simple green is black. Well, that's okay. Or not simple green, spray nine. Sorry, viewers. Making things more confusing than I have to. Yeah, the spray nine is black, so that's not. It, it's, it's, you know, it's filled up with old grease and stuff. Okay. Uh, we can probably still use it, though, I would think. Let's see here. Still, still okay. I know, I'm not even scrubbing this thing, I'm just using paper towel in it. Uh, I'm trying to, I don't know if I want these bubbles still here. I like it when the bubbles are not there. I'm just going to dunk that back in there for a second. Get rid of the bubbles. I don't know if that would, I don't know if that would create some weird, like, dry spot or whatever. If this had, if it had the, the those bubbles on there or not, or if those bubbles would just dry out and evaporate. Who knows? Okay. Let's let all this hoo-ha dry. And, uh, and I think what I'll do, since I've got the ultrasonic primed up and everything, and since it's all, you know, there and working, I might put more stuff in it. You know, these gears here and all that. I mean, this, I think, yeah, I, I don't know why I wouldn't. Okay, let's, let's get a second batch of cookies ready for the oven. Actually, viewers, I've got a better idea. Why don't I just use the ultrasonic as like a dunking kind of bin and just scrub all these bits down again. I know I scrubbed these guys down already, but I'm a little concerned of throwing more parts in the ultrasonic cleaner and then pulling them out and not sure where they go because these have been sitting in their cups, sorted, 
since 2019. So I'm just gonna clean more stuff up quickly and then we'll report back to you. Also, if I had half a brain, I would just, uh, you know, wipe the springs on the shirts and not, not try and dunk the barrel back into the cleaner to get the bubbles out. I don't know what I was thinking there. Okay, so we've got almost everything cleaned up. Uh, this, the spring barrel has actually dried. Like I'm not even like 10 minutes later here. These, these pieces here are drying. Spring, uh, the spring in the barrel here, they're drying. I also threw the spindle in there briefly. Uh, this spray nine seems to have shined it. Well, not by much, but it seems to have shined up the, I don't even know what it's called. It looks like a worm gear to me. I think that's exactly what it is. But anyway, this is slightly shinier. It was kind of a dull gray before. Now that's looking a little better. Um, I just noticed some, a, a spray nine moment here. Look at this gear. There's a little bit of rust on that. I'm gonna try and scrape that off. As you can see, it's in the gear teeth a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna utilize spray nine here and try and get that get that crud off there. Oh, and by the way, I even I discovered this by just looking around the parts. That this wheel here had nothing to do with any of this stuff here. I was just looking around, seeing if anything else needed cleaning, and I spotted that. So yeah, let's get that off. So after scrubbing this thing down. The rust is still not leaving this particular gear in that one spot. That's stupid. It's only this we it's only this gear too. This is part of the spring barrel ratchet assembly. Uh, there is a click spring that goes over this ratchet here. Yeah, I can't really explain it. Uh, anyway, point is there's rust here, and this is after my cleaning of it. And yeah, I can't quite get it out of that out of that crevice there. We managed to get it off the, well, not entirely off, but mostly off the main surface of the gear teeth, or not the gear teeth, sorry, the gear wheel. We mainly cleaned that up, but in the teeth there, that's where you want it cleaned up. Cosmetically, it's less important than it is from a functional standpoint. Yeah, there's still rust in there. So I might have to go get go out and um, pick up a, a bottle of um, evapo rust unless somebody else in the comments has a has a suggestion here but yeah no I don't know what else would get that off of there um, at least it's only one piece of this it's not like the whole thing is rusted out or something like that it's only that part so that's great WD-40 will do that to a phonograph too I'm pretty sure uh, generate rust but other than that the main goal here has been accomplished the mainsprings are clean well, Greg, you've got an ultrasonic cleaner filled up with Spray 9, and it's jet black, and we can see your ceiling almost perfectly in the reflection of the, of the Spray 9. Well, uh, there is a valve on the front of the ultrasonic, so we're going to use that to empty it out. So if we're actually executing this, we have taken the ultrasonic, and we've very carefully put it on top of this Home Depot Homer box, now, I don't know how many of you guys have ever seen one of these things before. They're kind of an orange plastic toolbox that I don't use. I just store other tools in there that I'm not using for main projects. Anyway, it is the perfect height of a spray nine bottle. So, if we just start our water feature up here. You know, who needs to buy a fountain when you have this thing? And also, and also this is kind of a slow process because if you go too fast with it, if you let too much fluid out or too much spray nine out as you can see that ball in there moves around I don't know if you can see that it opens up an area for the spray nine to leave or the whatever liquid you're using yeah if you open that full throttle this stuff will foam up and it'll go everywhere so you kind of have to release it in sort of a slower process like this this will take a few minutes to empty out 